What's your opinion of people who are saying that if Hans the Yard is to become a world champion one day, he needs to change training? Do you think within that fight you have the right instruction? Um, his trainer came into my room, Pat Barry, who I got a lot of respect for, came in my room and started talking about hand injury. So I said that he didn't hurt his hand. And then we got into a little thing, yeah? Things need to change. I need to make some changes. I tried to get my mind off of personal life. I had four deaths in my family in six months. I'm not gonna cry on camera. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. People say you don't have hard enough sparring. True or false? There's gonna be a lot of thinking. There's gonna be a lot of the discussions that are that have to be made or had to be had. So will Anthony Yard still be coached by Tunde AJ to get to that world level? Anthony, it's good to catch up with you. Of course, 2020 hasn't been the year that you most likely hoped it would be, both outside and inside the ring. You've had to deal with a lot of tragedy. But if we go back in time, you got to a point in 2029 where you were able to fight for a world championship. This is the dream of every single person that enters a boxing ring. You were able to do that. And you can see the picture behind me, you held belts, you won fights, and you got to the pinnacle, the mountain top, and you just couldn't quite get over the line. And it's probably the beginning of a conversation that's reverberated about yourself and your coach, whether he's the right person moving forward to get you not just in the ring for a world title shot, but to make sure that you eventually win it. So if we go back in time to that Kovalev fight, can you just talk me through just how special a moment that was for you? Um, you know, it's it's a mix and match, really. A mix and match. Um, before the fight, I was very excited. Um, it wasn't on my terms. I would have loved it to have been in England or a mutual country. Um, but again, uh, I saw his opportunity at the time, and we took the fight. We went out to Russia. Um, something that ninety nine point nine percent of fighters wouldn't have done. Being in my position, you know, a hot prospect, um, making a lot of noise, um, undefeated at the time. Um, I think I had something like 19 wins, 18 KOs. So um, to go over to Russia was a big risk. I said that as well. And I said, the only way I'm going to win that fight is to win by knockout. That would have played a part in how I even fought the fight, you know, feeling like I needed to win by knockout. I had to go for it. And, um, you know, it was a big accomplishment, you know, even for me to actually go out to, to Russia and to face that challenge head on. Um, it's something I can, look, I can look back on, I can learn from. And I can say that there's there's room for improvement. So um I don't know, there's positives in it because of I feel like I've you know I've challenged something that's beyond me, which shown, which that's shown. And um it wasn't the best because I didn't get the the result I wanted. My stock rose, um I gained a lot of respect, but again, when I think in terms of my mentality, I only want to achieve, you know, I don't really want any um devastating lessons. Um, as that was so I look back at that that experience and um, I'm happy I did it um, it showed me how hard I need to work but it showed me the level I can get to stop him this round stop him this round empty the tank now em listen you listen to what I'm saying empty the tank don't let this guy back in this fight please I beg I beg now of course a lot of people gained respect for you due to that fight. You went very close with a person that's been long in the game. But the conversation that happened afterwards, whether it's on social media, whether it's from commentators, whether it's from your fans, new and old, was that that despite your relationship with Tunde being very inspirational, is obviously someone that you respect and has played a long, pivotal role in your career and life. When you were in that corner 
and you needed advice that would have helped you go over the line, some people believed that you were given words of inspiration rather than words of tactics that could have made the difference. And you spoke previously to me about the lessons that you learned from that fight. Do you think within that fight you had the right instruction? Um, yes and no. Um, again, at the time, me and Tunde sat down and we spoke, just me and him. And then me, Tunde and Ade sat down between the three of us. Me and Ade sat down, just me, just me and him. Um, and people in the background as well. Um, we all sat down, we analysed the fight. We analysed things that I didn't do particularly well. We analysed things I've done great. Um, we also analysed instructions. And with instructions, Tunde held his hands up. You know, Tunde, again, he's... He's been at a good stage before, but he's never had a fighter um, like myself who he has trained, who he's known to have trained and for us to rise to that occasion. You know, he's never been at that occasion before. Same way I've never been at that occasion before where he's the head trainer, etc. So he put his hands up and said that there's things that he could have done better. You know, certain instructions, um, certain wording he used. Um, it's like you get to that point, no one knows what they're going to do until they're in that situation. And um, there was points, points in the fight where he was overwhelmed and he was doing things out of character or out of um, out of practice, I should say. Um, same for me. You know, if you saw when I hurt Kovalev, I started swinging. I just started throwing reckless punches because um, I was desperate to get him out of there. I was like, this is my opportunity. Those that have never been in the, that position before don't know how they're going to deal with that occasion. And... Um, I've, I've, I've given Tunde a lot of stick for the instructions he gave me in that fight. I gave myself a lot of stick for how I dealt with the occasion um, when I got to that point where I almost stopped Kovalev. Um, the, the, the criticisms there um, and the, the tactics and the progression, trying to learn and trying to elevate, they were there as well. But again, this is boxing. It's boxing and um, sometimes it's like I'm doing an apprenticeship in front of the world. Sometimes you might study for a test, you get different questions <laughs> um, or you get a different scenario. So you can say you're going to do this, say you're going to do that. But then when the time comes, sometimes it don't work out in the way you thought it would have worked out. Okay, and that's just... Then just to interject on that one, boxing, like you said, is a lesson and you're always learning. Now, the conversation going forward 2020 was that you take the lessons you had in that Kovalev fight and move them into the upcoming fights, which will set you up to once again go to the world title stage. Now, you were successful for your first fight in 2020, and then obviously the big fight is the, the poster behind me. And for some of the people that watched that, they believed that the same mistakes from your corner, i.e. Tunde, were being um, once again made, whereby you weren't being given the right instructions for you to maximize the ability that you have. Now, some people also think that maybe you learned from that Kovalev fight to hold back a little bit. So in those last rounds, you could really come on like you actually did, but was it the fear of being too gassed that held you back specifically? And then we're gonna move on to Tunde in a second. Um, to answer your question, I'll answer it in stages. The... People, some people, again, I haven't looked at all the comments. Um, I haven't even looked at a majority of the um, comments, but from speaking to close family and friends, speaking to people that I know, um, first of all, I'll say this when we was when I was in the fight, so when I was actually fighting yeah, in the boxing ring, both me and Linda often knew. I'm telling you this, we both knew who we thought we was winning. There was even a point when we were talking to each other. If you look at when the bell rang and I put my hand up, I was I was confident because you know it was for me. I've never been 12 rounds before. There was all this thing about is Anthony Anthony's fitness and this and that. Um, so it's like I got myself to that point where this is how my process was going through the fight. Early rounds, so again, during the fight, I knew he won, he won the first round. That was in my mind. Second round I came out, it felt a bit different. Third round I came out, it felt a bit different. But I say that in the fight, during the fight, the close rounds were the first three rounds. This, this is just my opinion, and this is how I felt in there. Um, when I watched the fight, a little bit was different, but when we was in there, first three rounds were close. After four rounds, I felt as if I took over. I think there was one other round where he could have, it was it was close, like in the later rounds. I think it was like the seventh. I can't, don't quote me, 
but like around sixth, seventh, one of them rounds, yeah. But I thought I was comfortable. And then, yes, going into the instructions, the instructions were backing up how I felt at the time. So I was confident. I thought I was winning the fight. Going into the twelfth round, I said I want the knockout. Everyone knows my style. Everyone knows I'm. I love entertainment. I love getting the knockout victories. It's my career. You want to have them knockout victories on your record. Um, that's how I got to the stage I was at anyway. And um, you saw me. I went for it in the twelfth round. Um, didn't get him out of there completely, but I was so confident going into that twelfth round. Twelfth round, you end the fight strong. You take the belt. I felt like I, I took the belt in that twelfth round. So do you when think, I went, wait, to interject, do you think that if you'd have followed that strategy from, say, round 10 onwards, do you wish you could go back in time and give yourself that instruction? Well, of course, of course. Um, absolutely. You know, if, 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 I look, if I went back, because of what's happened, yeah, no one knows how this has affected me, or not affected me, but how it's impacted me. It's, it's, it's upset me because this is my career. I still feel like I, I won the fight. Um, Again, when I went back and watched it back, it was closer than I thought it was when I was in the boxing ring. That's where it probably goes with your question. Was I being, was I being given the right instructions? Yes and no. Because at the time, when I was in the heat of the moment, I felt like I was winning. I felt like Lyndon Arthur thought I was winning as well. As I said, we was talking in the ring. I'd given him all the props. I gave him a big congratulations and said, you know, it's just your, your time now. Enjoy the shine. Enjoy what you're going through because it's your time. I don't know what you've been through in your life. Um, I don't know what how hard you've worked to get to this point. This is your your chance. The rematch needs to happen. Um, so the way I see it is this. Tunde and my, my corner, if you notice, Tunde is the only one that speaks in my corner. And even after we all spoke, the way they saw it before watching it back was I was dominating the fight. I was on the front foot. I didn't go back once. I was landing the cleaner, more effective punches, etc. When I watched the fight back, all that was being highlighted was a jab from Lyndon Arthur. Yes, he's got a fantastic jab. The jab was working in certain areas, but do I feel like that overwhelmed everything I was doing? I, I will have to say no. Um, there's some parts in the fight where when I watched it back, I was like, some, some of the shots I was hitting him with, you can't even see them. Sometimes that's camera angle as well. But again, that's something for me to learn in boxing. When you're in there sometimes, if you get hit with even two jabs, they could see that as that's that's his round. So it's like going back to that mentality of it's straight savage mode. I'm going back on that beast mentality of yes, I need to learn how to, I need to better my boxing skills because I'm in a catch 22. I've been getting criticized saying I can't do 12 rounds. I've been criticized saying I don't do this, I don't do that. So maybe I need to just strip myself back down and say, F this is straight beast mode again because. They don't want to see boxing from me. So it's like a speculation. I'm known for knocking people out. So because I wasn't doing that, they've seen it as like he's doing something that's stopping me from doing what I normally do. And that wasn't the case. And that's what, again, that's feedback that's been given to me. And that made sense. People were saying, we thought you won the fight as well. But from the way you fought the fight, it looked like Lyndon Arthur was making you fight like that. And when I look back and I watched it the third time, I said, ah, I get what they're saying. I'm a person I can hold my hands up and say, I can see where I went wrong. I can see what I've done good. And I can only bet on that. So I do, you think, absolutely... do you think well, that the public in that fight, to say every one of your other fights disappeared, in that fight, did they see the best version of anti -AI? Yes or no? I would say no. I so would say no. Going because... forward, obviously, Lyndon Arthur has said that he had an injury in the rematch. Hopefully, that will happen in 2021. What would be different from you? Okay, let's do this in stages, yeah? What would be different from me is... That there will be no surprises. There won't be, I won't be going in there and working on boxing skills because I feel comfortable. Yeah, because that's what happened. I'm going to go in there and dominate because that's what I feel like I need to do. I need to get the knockout victory. And I said it after the fight as well. I was like, do I have to knock out everybody? From what, be, what was said to me by close friends and people that I, I love and trust was speculation. And I get what they're saying. It would have been perceived as if Lyndon Arthur was keeping me at bay when that. In, during the fight wasn't the case but when I go back into to what you just said you know, about the actual fight I feel like Lyndon Arthur during the fight I, I urge everyone to go back here yeah? there's all this speculation about hand injury 
I meant I said the wrong word during after the fight. I was heated and I, I mentioned the word robbery. I don't like that word, yeah, because it was a close fight as I, when I look back at it. So I apologize for saying the word robbery. The judges have got a job to do. I respect them, um, but I still feel like I won the fight. But it's boxing. I've seen decisions before that I didn't agree with. So I'll leave that as that. Now, talking about injury, yeah, the, the, the disrespect is this. He's mentioned about his hand. Majority of boxers have had bad little bruises and bumps and bruises on their hands. People don't know this. I, I've been getting acupuncture on my shoulder because I've had a shoulder injury. Do I make excuses and say that's why I was holding back with certain power shots? Absolutely not. Because that's not boxing. That's not respected in boxing. That's not respected for me. He's saying it hurt his hand, yeah? But then if you watch the fight, I urge everyone to do this. His trainer said, let the right hand go. He said, I can't find Anthony. I can't find him. I can't land the shot. Tunde, now this is what people don't know again. Someone came round and told Tunde, we think Lyndon Off has hurt his hand. Now, if you look at the commentary, so they were saying that he's not throwing his right hand. They've come round and told Tunde, we think Lyndon Off has hurt his right hand. Then Tunde said to me in that after that yeah. round, I think Lyndon Off has hurt his right hand. So I said, no. I, my reply to him, and it's on camera, I said, no, he just can't land it. Because I was, at the time I was buzzed, I knew what I was doing. Like, I was like, we was talking to each other. This is why I was able to come with that response because he was jittering to throw his right hand and I was saying, no, like, no, I'm not there. And it was booked anyway. That's between million and a half. <laughs> I'm going to start coming on. Pat him around. Eh? It's okay. Pat him around. It's like you can't even roll. Pat land it. You're saying you can't land it. You're not trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And I may be wrong, but it looks like he's hurt his hand. He ain't throwing no right hand. Eh? So fuck, throw them shots at him. He's got one hand. I can see it. I can see it. Okay? He can't land it. He can't throw the right hand. He so. can't. He can't hit it. And if he throws it, shoulder, part, I got it. But when he went back to his corner, again, he mentioned you have to throw the right hand to give Anthony something to think about. Yeah. You need to give him something to think about. First thing you listen to yourself. Oh, no. so then that ran, the same ran that Tony said that to me, he threw the right hand and he landed it. And I said, okay. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with his right hand, because that, that was a hard shot. Okay, so then let's move on to Tunde yeah. then. If we look back at the fight, Kovalev... Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry to cut you. Wait, sorry to cut you. I need to finish this point, because this is a key point about the hand injury. After the fight, yeah, they asked him again, they're pushing that narrative. Lyndon, did you hurt your right hand? He replied saying, no. I just... Anthony's defence. But then what happened was... a few minutes, well, not a few minutes, about half an hour later, his trainer came into my room, Pat Barry, who I got a lot of respect for, came in my room and started talking about hand injury. So I said, he didn't hurt his hand. And then we got into a little thing, yeah? Not a little thing, but he was saying, you know, he hurt his hand. I'm not going to go but too, into too much about what was said in the change room, but after that, Lyndon Arthur's whole perspective and what he was saying to the public started changing about his hand, about his boxing one hand. And I thought that he bought into the fact of saying, oh yeah, that's an excuse. Let me say I hurt my right hand. That's why I wasn't throwing the right hand. As I was saying, the rematch is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so either way, the rematch will happen. Then yeah. was declared the winner. Obviously not the result that you wanted or the result that you believe is true to how you performed. But if we look back after the fight now, once again, the, the situation happened like at Kovalev. People were questioning the instructions you were getting from your corner. I know obviously both you and Tunde believed that you were winning the fight, but in yeah. terms of tactics, to negate the jab that some people believe you're having difficult with. When it comes to reading those comments, hearing those comments and listening to them, what's your opinion of people who are saying that if Anthony Yard is to become a world champion one day, he needs to change trainer? Um, my reply to that comment, again, I'm just talking off the top of my head. Um, it's not enough to sit down and roll or anything like that. My reply to that comment would be, only time will tell. Um, again, as I said to you before, or as I've said before, um, things need to change. I need to make some changes. Um, I've said also, I need to, not only in my life, because I've been through a lot this year, and to keep myself occupied, I, I carried on boxing. Um, I carried on training. I tried to get my mind off of personal life. I had four deaths in my family. 
in six months. I'm not going to cry on camera. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But um, I'm like a backbone to my family. So that's a lot. And again, Tony always says to me, um, you're, go you're going through a lot. I see that as excuses. People say to me, you're dealing with too much. I see that as excuses. Um, if I look back and I see it as like, oh, I made a mistake. I should have taken the time out. I should have recovered. I should have got my mind right. Um, Cause then I will be able to think clearer and all them kind of things. Then so be it, that's life. But I'm a trooper. And again, when I shout lions in the camp and I say it's a mentality, the show must go on. And some people respect it, some people won't. Um, and when I say lions in the camp, some people see it as cli um, cliche or tacky. Some people see it as that's real. Some people don't understand what I mean by it. It's like a lion has no choice but to go out and hunt and get what it, what it needs, get, get food. It's cub, so he, his own child might have died, but he's still got to go and do his business. He's only got a certain window to sub and go through what he's going through. So I even try to explain it to my family. I'm like, the show must go on. Um, we, we, then we how must... hard is that for you? Because obviously, Anser Yard, you're a professional boxer, you've got a massive following, but all of that aside, you're still a human. You're still a yeah. person that has low days and has high days and has days where you can take on anyone and days that you can't take on anyone simply based on the year that you've had. Like we spoke about the death of your grandmother and your father. Like it's not been a good year for you outside the ring. So if you don't give yourself that moment to just exist without having to look after anyone else, without having to think about your future, how do you get rid of that, that weight that's on your shoulders to enable you to then be free in 2021 to really fly to all of the things you want to achieve? Um, I think it's just staying focused. Um, again, now, again, I've got myself to that point where this year has just been terrible for me. On another day, and this is just boxing, another day I would have won that fight. The judges would have given it to me. Um, Again, on a couple other days, the judge would have given it to him again. Um, another day, look, I would have got the I would have got the knockout victory. We don't know, but it's the past now, so I'm not really gonna dwell on it too much. But I'm not gonna let this situation, meaning me, the fight with me and an Alpha, I'm not gonna let it. I've tried to not let it dampen me too much because. I didn't go out there and in my term, just lose a fight. You know, it was a close fight. He said it, I've admitted it, you know, watching it back on TV, it was a close fight Then I fought. I still feel like I won by one or two rounds after the 12th round. Um, again, it's my opinion, everyone's opinionated. Um, Tunde, again, needs to do better. I need to do better. My team needs to do better in terms of instruction. Cause we worked a lot on, on skills and a lot of things that I was lacking. Um, but again, let's talk about the training then. People say you don't have hard enough sparring. True or false? Um, I feel like partially false. Um, partially true. The whole speculation about me not sparring um, was a misinterpretation of what Tunde said before the COVID fight. I do spar. <laughs> Bruises don't just come from nowhere when I haven't had a fight. You know, there was a time when I had a um, little, because I, I mark very easily. Very, very easy. So I then if we focus on the true part, what part's true? Um, the part that's true, um, that we do need to do more spar um more competitive sparring is again that's something me and Tunde spoke about straight after the fight, the same day as the fight, even before I had time to think. That's one of the first things that came into my mind was that I need to get myself back to I was angry. I need to get myself back to the savage mode. Like when I was in the amateurs with Tony C say they again, I don't like to use this word robbed, um, but even hit the guy, the own guy, the guy I fought came in my change room and tried to give me his trophy and said, you won that fight. Like, I don't, like, look at my face. I, the guy's face was busted up and he tried to give me his trophy and I was so angry and upset. And I said, from this day, I remember swearing. I remember swearing at my amateur coach. I swore at him <laughs> because he told me I can't stop everybody because I won't get no fights. And that's what happened. Again, Tony's like an uncle to me. Tony Cissé, a respected guy in boxing. And then I said to him with a lot of anger, with probably a tears in my eyes. And I said to him, I'm knocking at everybody because that's not happening to me again. And I feel like this is another milestone, man. It's like, I'm in a professional game now where this is it. It's like, this is my life. And I felt like in a close decision, because I, I didn't get the, 
the, the, the verdict. I didn't get the decision. So maybe this was a little pat on my shoulder, on the top of my head to say, we need Anthony Yard back. Yes, we're learning on boxing skills and trying to better ourselves because again, being in my position, I don't I didn't like the cover of the fight. I took too many punches. And maybe that's because of the occasion, and maybe that's because of I felt like I needed to do it a certain type of way to get on the inside. I don't know. But sometimes you need to dog it out and say it's 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 a straight lion aggression, beast mode thing. And again, I feel like that's what it's enlightened again. So um I'm, so then, I'm looking forward to quick question. Do you see yourself as world class? A hundred percent, man. Listen, when I when I watch the fight back here, it's it's frustrating for me because again, this is when I give the this is when I give a lot of criticism to Tunde. I give a lot of criticism to myself. I was enjoying myself too much. That's literally the point. The point I got to. I was I felt comfortable in the fact, but then when I look back and I remember the things that were being said to me. If it was a couple rounds more, where or, or or I was instructed to, the next couple rounds you need to dominate. I only got told that on the top round, so, and then that's what I went and did. So, yeah, everyone's saying leave Tunde, um, do this. People forget as well. Tunde is my manager, and exactly. again, Tunde. If we talk about it like this, Tunde is your manager, your coach, and you probably admit this. He's your friend. So mm-hmm. how hard a decision would it be for you to part ways with him anyway, without you answering the question, but because you've got so many connections with him, he's played a pivotal role in your life. Yeah, um, it will be, again, I've, just got, I've got this thing about me, yeah? I've got a, a loyalty aspect to my life, and it's not because of that, I feel like that's, that's written down and that's what I need to do to succeed or anything like that. It's just that I form bonds. I had one amateur coach, I've had one professional coach. Um, but even when I was an amateur, we added people to the team. Um, I learned things from different coaches. And when I was an amateur, I started training with Tunde. So it was like I had three different areas of training at the time when I was an amateur. Um, I went out to America, I was sparring in America, you know, quality people, Michael Hunter, who's a heavyweight. Um Andrew Tabiti, just to name some names that people will know. Um, I sparred James the Girl, um, and a number of other people, Chris Eubank Jr. There's a, a lot of names, professionals that people would know. Um, since I've been professional, it hasn't been as often. Um, I used to spot when I first started professional, I used to spot um Oval McKenzie a lot, who's a who was a cruiserweight, um, who hit hard as well. But um, that's something I mentioned Sunday straight away. I said, look. I need to get myself to a point where I, I get in sparring partners and I'm knocking my, like Matt Tyson kind of thing, is I'm knocking mm-hmm. sparring partners. Like, like I'm, but when I do spar, it's more of like a, yeah, you spar, but you don't, I know I hit, I know I can hit. And I've hit sparring partners before and they've stopped, like they've, and I've, I've calmed down a bit. But I said to Tony, I said, bro, this is, all this here, it's bringing it back out of me, you know, it's bringing it back out of me. So, it's just one of the things that right now, again, I haven't done no interviews since the fight. Um, well, I've done interviews on the day of the fight, but I've had a lot of time to reflect. Um, and yeah. Okay. We're literally days away from the start of the new year. And new year, new me, all of the cliches, the mantras, but whatever it means, everybody likes to start the new year fresh. And I'm assuming your aim is not just to win the rematch but to move on to once again be on the world level so will Anthony Yard still be coached by Tunde Ajay to get to that world level me and Tunde need to sit down and talk me and Adi my trainer need to sit down and talk me and my promoter Frank Warren need to sit down and talk my whole team even people in the backgrounds, the people that don't necessarily like to be mentioned or, or that are mentioned, we need to sit down and talk. And again, sometimes it's about different group meetings, coming to a decision or conclusion. Um, as it stands now, Tunde is my manager. Tunde is my trainer. Um, we've done a fantastic job this far, but again, change needs to happen. Um, that will maybe have to be news that comes out um, when the decision's made, 
um, as it stands right now, there's going to be a lot of um, there's going to be a lot of thinking. There's going to be a lot of the discussions that are that have to be made or had to be had. I won't openly say that um, I'm going to leave Tunde. Um, I won't openly say I'm going to stay with Tunde. Again, as I said, dis discussions need to be had. Um, Tunde is like an uncle to me. He's not even like um, a friend or nothing like that. It's like his family. And um, Tunde wants the best for me, I'm sure. Um, I want the best for Tunde. I'm best for myself as well. Um, so again, that's why discussion needs to be had. But again, it's the end of the year. I'm going to enjoy my Christmas. And um, so, again, I'll put out a statement because that's what people want to know. Am I going to stay with Tunde? So I will put out an official statement uh, maybe the end of the year. Um, and then we get we just go from there. Well, of course, everybody hopes that in 2021 you have a successful career, and I'm sure your fans will be hoping that you show exactly what you can do in the in the ring to the full extent of your abilities. You and Tim, though, you already said, are uh, more than just a relationship of trainer or manager. It's a brotherhood. He's he's an uncle to you. So I know it's going to be a hard decision, whatever decision you make, because obviously you want to be the best version of yourself and whether it's from your fans or from the people who are quote unquote haters, I'm pretty sure everybody wants to see the best version of anti Yard. So thanks for talking to me today. Good luck in 2021. Stay healthy, have a good Christmas. And I know you're saying you're a lion. I know you're saying it's beast mode, but take some time to really just reflect and allow the very bad things that happened to you and your family to get some time for you to think it through and then you can go into 21 and just be the best version yourself and really show people what you can do um again just being honest um i'm not someone that openly speaks about mental health or um, mental stability or what people what you're going through or whatever but i realized this year it's important um and that's why i've openly said it so many times you know when you're going through it's sometimes good to just say it especially when you're in a position like myself because you don't know who you could possibly help um, and what I've been through this year, it's, it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard to deal with mentally, um, physically as well, because it drains you. Um, people that, again, I won't really go into it too much because it's depressing. But, um, yeah, I will take time out. I'm going. I'm taking my family, because my family have been through a lot, man. I'm taking my family away somewhere um, just to have a break. Um, I can't help but train, so I might go for my little runs or whatever. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I'm going to take a bit of time out, man, and, and reflect. And just Very just briefly, practice. in 2021, what can people expect from Answer Yard? In 2021, people can expect um, the beast back. People can expect the beast back because this has hurt me. Again, the decision not going my way has hurt me. I feel like it's hurt my everything I've worked for so far. Um, and you're going the beast is back. That's that's all I can say. I'm not I'm not on this cliche thing of saying, oh, watch next year, or whatever. It's gonna show. It's gonna show. And again, it's life. No one can predict life. Um, but the beast is back. Absolutely.